Hi you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new vlog. Welcome to a new monthly reset. I'm so excited. This reset's gonna be a little bit different. I've said this in previous videos, but I think the really cool thing about resetting and kind of like getting your life together for a new month is that every month you're gonna need something different and your resets can look different month to month. I feel like this month I really need more of like a home reset, transitioning from winter to spring, getting my life together as a whole, tidying up, not so much the like goal oriented part of it. And at first I was like, maybe I just won't even do a reset this month. But then I was like, you know what? Resets evolve with the seasons. And like I said, depending on just what we need that month that I think it could be fun to do this a bit more vlog style, take you guys along for the next few days and just kind of what we're doing to reset for a new month this month. Cause like I said, it's always changing. I definitely feel like we need a bit more of just like an overall life reset uh, going into a new month. It also helps to like we're going into the weekend, which is Easter. So I feel like it's a nice time to get the house together. If you can't tell, I don't know if I sound congested or not, but I was just down with like a 36 hour, like chest cold. Honestly, it kind of felt like having COVID again. Uh, I don't think it was, but I'm finally feeling better today and up for vlogging but I took a few days to just sit on the couch and sleep and rest and I read a ton it was honestly much needed and you know and after like you're done being sick you're like I need to like just wash everything in the house and just get all the germs out that's what we need to do uh, as well so anyways I'm looking forward to it if you guys are new here hi my name's Carter I talk all about getting through life in your 20s unfiltered, and we're a chatty time around here so if you're looking for another creator to just like have really long chatty videos on in the background, I might be your gal. Who knows? We'll see. But yeah, I'm really excited. I will put up on the screen here kind of like my little checklist for this month. Like I said, I feel like it changes every month, honestly. And I haven't really done too much with goal setting. So maybe we'll work on that tomorrow morning. But you can tell by the checklist, we just have a lot to do around the house. And I thought it'd be kind of fun, honestly, to like switch it up. Cause like I said, every month you just need something different. But today's plan is to just kind of slowly ease myself back into doing things around the house. I've kind of just been rotting for the last few days, which is so needed when you're sick. I feel like when I was in my early twenties and like, you know, in university and grinding and hustling and working multiple jobs, I was always the person to like push through a cold, push through sickness and after having COVID twice and having long COVID, I've realized that the worst thing you can do for yourself when you're sick is to try and just like push through it and like live your regular life. And so I've really been trying. And I mean, I did have to work. Like I worked from the couch. I wasn't like that sick that I couldn't work, but I really have tried to slow down these last few days and just like give my body the rest that it needs. Drinking lots of tea, lots of Neocitrin, Vicks. You guys know the drill. Today, my plan is to just really tidy up the house and get the germs out. Um, and I also wanna take today to just kinda like reflect, like actively reflect on what I want my goals to be for April. And then tomorrow we can kinda do like maybe a little more goal setting side and like check in on my budget. And I also need to clean out the fridge. Some of this stuff is stuff we do like weekly too, like more of like a Sunday reset or weekly reset kind of thing. Cause we don't have a specific day that we reset, but I just wanna go through the fridge. I feel like sometimes we slack on that. And then before you know, we have, you know, like veggies and stuff that are going bad. So I wanna go through the fridge today, especially because Matt after work is gonna go to Costco, get everything we need for Easter. And then I want the fridge to be like ready when he gets home. We'll do a haul for you guys. That was uh, really kind and is the one that gave me the sickness. So he's like feeling fine. And there's nothing worse than like when someone in your house gets sick and you just like know it's gonna hit you. It's just like a matter of time and you're just like waiting for it. Like I thought I was in the clear and then I woke up with a sore throat or I got a sore throat Tuesday night and I was like, oh shit, I got it. So anyways, Matt's fine now because Matt's the one that had it first, but yeah, welcome to a little monthly reset. I'm excited to switch it up a little bit, do it a bit more vlog style for you guys. Definitely gonna take it easy today. Like I said, just do a few things around the house, uh, you know, and whatnot. And then tomorrow I'll maybe spend the morning doing like a little goal setting. And yeah, but welcome to the vlog. I'm gonna maybe eat some lunch, drink this tea, maybe make a second coffee, and then we'll kind of get going on just like tidying up the house and stuff. But I'm so excited to spend some time with you guys.
the closet in our bedroom has truly just become a free-for-all for me the last few days like I've just been throwing clothes in here and this gives me so much anxiety so I really need to just clean this up honestly <laughs> Hi guys, hello. It's a few hours later. Uh, I mean, I was always planning on continuing this vlog after work, but I just took a nap, which was really nice and very much needed. Listen, one thing about me is I'm a napper. I think you're either a napper or you're not, but I nap like every weekend. I don't really nap much during the week, but obviously I've been sick the last few days and I was like, you know what? Let's take a little nap after work and regroup. It kind of works because Matt finishes work at four he had to drive to costco he's gonna be at costco for like an hour and then he'll have an hour drive home so i kind of have some time today so just took a nap feeling honestly stellar i wasn't like feeling pretty sick today but i was just i was just tired uh so i said okay nappy time it is and uh and now i just want to do a few little things i feel like my favorite thing about getting my life together over like a weekend is i can just do a little bit every day that to me feels a little more attainable than sometimes like having a whole like gist day which sometimes those are very warranted don't get me wrong but i'm like i don't have energy levels like that yet to be like i'm getting my whole life together in one day you know especially with like work and stuff so it's after work i want to clean the fridge out in preparation of matt coming home with costco stuff we only go to costco about every three months just because we don't live really close to one and for two people we just don't like eat enough from costco uh, the only thing we like stock up on at costco is meat uh we do like a bi-annually meat stock up there but because we're doing easter brunch and with like bacon and eggs and stuff it made more sense to go to costco for all of that so yeah i'm gonna clean out the fridge give it a nice little clean and then i made a juice earlier and i really want to find a way to save the pulp i looked it up on tiktok which i don't know about you guys but sometimes i use tiktok as like my search engine and i saw someone on tiktok freeze them like freeze the pulp into like little balls or pucks and use them for smoothies to like not waste any of the pulp so i think i'm gonna try that because mine is mainly just like ginger spinach cucumber apple like a green juice so i thought that could be kind of nice to pop into smoothies and stuff so i'm gonna do that that way we don't waste any like the fiber in the pulp and that's kind of it for today and then like i said tomorrow i want to get up and have maybe a nice morning and do some reflection and some goal setting and clean the house and stuff but jam it out and get this fridge cleaned it needs it it really needs it Okay, you guys, Matt is home. I'll do a little Costco haul. I'd say this is like, it's typical, but it's not. There's a few things that obviously like, we don't usually buy three loaves of cinnamon raisin bread, but because we're hosting brunch, we did. But most of this is like a typical stock up for us. And we go probably every three months. And so yeah, we've got butter. Matt said it was on sale for $4.99. $4.99? That's a really good price, honestly. We always grab this guy they do have it at like walmart and stuff now like great value has their own version of this um but it's a really great quick breakfast idea for yogurt frozen blueberries we prefer high protein did you see the high protein milk because apparently they sell it now no they didn't see it oh okay well i heard costco is starting to sell the high protein milk but matt just picked up lactose free that's a, that's the dill pickle salad kits i wish you could like freeze these Save oh, yeah, they'll be done before then. Uh, so nan bread. We're like really on our nan bread kick. Brioche buns. I mean, Dude, this one? I'd say it's like a. I would buy this good. again and then freeze it, but obviously this is for brunch. I asked Matt to get me a treat. It's four of them. Oh, it's four. Yeah. That's not bad. How much? 
I don't like 20 bucks. Oh. I was gonna get the thick one. I like maple flavor. Oh yeah, I don't like so that. I don't know if everybody's gonna. Uh, I asked Matt to get me a treat and to pick these at which I love anything coconut. So I'm gonna just try them. Obviously they're really good. We always get a bag of mixed nuts, uh, Brussels sprouts, celery, carrots. Uh, this is obviously not typical, but we just got a oven roast or sirloin roast for oh. Easter. Matt's favorite granola, and then eggs and then this is literally the best pizza to ever exist like i will eat this over getting takeout any day the motor city pizza detroit style deep dish pizzas are just so good highly recommend so yummy so that's our costco haul i don't think we're gonna do much else to get our life together today have some dinner hang out and put all this away now in my newly cleaned fridge Good morning, you guys. It is the next day. Hopefully you can't hear the laundry. It's right behind me, it's going on, but I closed the door, so hopefully it's not too loud. Um, Matt's outside changing my tires right now. I feel like this month, our my April reset is also kind of a mix of a little bit of a spring reset. So he's doing that because it's finally been like above zero for a few days now, and everything's closed today. So we figured we may as well get just like a ton of stuff done around the house. It's one of those things where I feel like I sound congested in my head, but I probably don't to you guys, and if I do, I apologize, but I'm feeling really good, honestly. I have been congested since I had COVID again in November, so sniffles, cough, I'm used to it by now. But I had a really nice, slow morning. I'm really enjoying doing this a little bit more vlog style. I like both. Well, I don't love sit-down videos, but I love the sit-down reset. But let me know which one you guys prefer or if I should like just switch it up every few months. I feel like this is kind of a bit more casual well i guess the reset is casual because i just sit and chat but i don't know let me know what you guys think um i feel like this kind of shows how i do it throughout like the day or days so whenever i am going to kind of set up my next month in terms of like goals and just like my calendar and stuff i love to do a brain dump which you guys saw this morning and i'm just a chaotic person i don't do all the journaling with prompts i just want to like spill out my brain onto paper which is why we brain dump and so when it comes to like reflecting and resetting for a new month, I will just write down whatever comes to my mind from the previous month that like I want to carry forward or maybe change and tweak into a new goal. And then also just like whatever's going on in the month ahead. I'm realizing, as you guys know, we have like a really, well, we've been having a rough start to 2024 and there's just a lot that's out of our control. But the things I can control, I'm quite happy with like, I'm really happy um, like if you take social media for example I'm really happy about the balance I have right now with YouTube and short form I feel like it's really fun I get like different creative juices flowing with short form and um, I don't know I'm really happy with having no upload schedule on YouTube now and just posting whenever which usually ends up being two times a week sometimes three but I feel like I have a lot better of a relationship with YouTube in terms of like posting and um, I'm just really happy with social media and I've just realized, you, you know, you can't make number goals happen. You can't make yourself hit 100K. So as long as you're posting consistently, like I'm just here for the ride. I'm just enjoying it. So I'm really happy with where I am with social media. Um, in terms of like health and wellness, my main goal is to just focus on the challenge, which I am tweaking. I talked about this on Instagram, but I'll share with you guys a little bit more after financially um as long as i hit those savings and investing goals every month i really like can do whatever i want with the rest of my money um like not that sounds like bad but i just mean like as long as i'm hitting my saving and investing goals the rest is gonna fluctuate our grocery bill is super high this month because we're hosting easter twice as long as i'm hitting those saving and investing goals and like my sinking funds I'm content with work once again too. Like my corporate job, I'm happy. I actually just got a really big raise, which is really exciting and unexpected. Um, I guess that's kind of like my high for the month. Uh, if you work in healthcare, you know, it's not like other settings. It's kind of, I guess, maybe similar to the government, how there's like steps. You can't just go to your boss like you could maybe at like a startup or a smaller company and say like, I think I deserve a raise and this is why. Um, because you fall under like a scale. So I am like a... I don't even know how to explain it, but let's say <clears throat> with non-union staff, there are like 10 job positions. So like, let's say an 01 is like an admin assistant and a 10 is like the highest, like a manager. I'm like an 04. And then within those like separate job posting kind of categories, you have a 10 step scale system. So 
I am like an 04, 03, I think, which basically is like a one is where you start and then every year you get a raise on like your fiscal year anniversary. Everyone that was non-unionized in the hospital um, got a raise, which is nice. And I actually got bumped up a title because I worked my ass off to show them that I, um, it, which once again, like I could have just not gotten the raise because if they gave my position a raise, they would have had to give everyone's a raise. But I really fought, I fought so hard because I am doing like four people's jobs. And yes, my title doesn't say that like as a coordinator, but I'm doing multiple people's jobs. And anyways, I got a really big raise and I'm really, really proud of myself. It's probably the biggest raise I've ever got working in healthcare. I've been there six years now. I'm really proud of myself because if I had not advocated for myself to move up a job title, I would have still gotten a raise, but it wouldn't have been as big. Like only did I get my yearly raise because I, I've been at the company another year, but I also got bumped up a title and that's because I advocated for myself so really happy professionally with where I am now and we're getting to be in busy season so I'm not going to set many goals for that I just want to survive honestly house and home once again um, we are doing like a five months of five home project series for a brand deal on uh, Instagram which is really exciting and so we're just going to kind of set that one project to be our one goal every month yeah I just kind of want to take it easy this month I feel like in half the aspects of my life I'm like quite content and then the other half it's not that I'm not content but I want to kind of push myself as the weather's getting nicer. You know, my depression is kind of, you know, subs subsiding. Like she's, she's calming down a little bit. She'll always be there, but she's calming down. I feel like I can really work on my personal self, my relationship, and then house and home now that it's getting nicer out and we can do things outside. And then this is the time where I also just like write down my monthly favorites and I kind of go through, um, I have a notion page for like the movies and TV shows we've watched and just like products that I'm loving all jot down throughout the month. So I kind of pulled all of those together to share with you guys. I pulled my reading stats and then now I just want to go through my new releases for April um, so I can share some books that I'm looking forward to reading in April. I don't know if I'm going to set a TBR, but I definitely want to kind of like let you guys know some of the books I'm looking forward to reading in April because April is a stacked month for new releases. So that's kind of what we did to start the day. And I pretty much have everything to do from the personal side still. So I need to go through my budget and update it. I haven't really done it this month just because I haven't really been leaving the house and spending a ton of money. So I need to go through and update my budget. Um, I want to set my April goals. When I was doing my brain dump, you guys saw I was checking off some of my March goals, but we'll kind of go through that together after. I also need to update my analytics for social media. I do that every month. And then I just want to go over my Google calendar for uh, the month ahead and see kind of what's going on. And then I need to update my analytics for social media. And then also just go over my calendar for the month because we have some travel starting to pick back up. So I just kind of want to go through and plan, in, plan out my month. So we're just going to do a little bit uh, more stuff around the house laundry picking up around the house and then this afternoon I think we're going to do the personal thing and like go over my goals um, favorites all that kind of stuff is one of those spots that gets the most cluttered in our house so it doesn't have to be your entryway but pick one spot that just gets cluttered every month no matter what maybe you have like a junk drawer and organize it we actually just or matt just cut the legs off so it's like the perfect chance for me to reorganize it because everything is empty and i can 
vacuum it out because it obviously accumulates so much dirt with it being a little shoe cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and vacuum this. Good opportunity for me to just like wipe it down and then kind of go through everything that's in it. Here's kind of like an overview of all the random stuff that was in it. And then also just the random dog stuff. And this is the time too where I will kind of go through and see if any of their collars or harnesses need to be washed as well. Okay, you guys, it's about three o'clock. I just filmed that whole clip and I wasn't in focus the entire time. So <laughs> live, laugh, love. But I'm about to sit down and get some reading done because whenever we're resetting, doing any kind of a weekly reset, Sunday reset, monthly reset, life reset, I believe in the sandwich model. And I will explain the sandwich model for anyone who's new here. Basically what that means is the sun is coming in again. She's really trying to say hello. Um, the bottom bun, the bottom bun is a nice, slow, cozy morning. Okay, we don't need to rush into getting our life together. Coffee, reading, whatever brings you joy. We can't rush into being productive. There's no point. The meat of the sandwich, that's when you get your shit done. Okay, that's when we clean, we reset, we organize, we do whatever we gotta do for the week, the month, whatever we're resetting for. And then the top bun is me time again. Whether that's an afternoon reading, a date night, Matt and I are probably going to make some like frozen pizza tonight and just hang out and spend some time together. That is how you reset in a balanced way with the sandwich model. So all that to say, I am done getting my life together today. Um, we'll carry this vlog into tomorrow, which I think it's kind of fun to do this vlog style because I don't have to just like sit down and talk to the camera for 40 minutes straight. I can take you guys through how I actually reset my life, which is usually over the course of a few days. You, you guys just usually see the end result of it. Current, I guess like literary fiction read and then current romance read. I read a lot this month. However, I will state that I read a lot because one, I didn't have a car. Matt's car has been in the garage for almost five weeks now. And so I've only really been able to like leave the house on the weekends when Matt's home. And so after work on my days off, like I've just been reading a lot and then I also feel like I read a lot of literary fiction this month and I feel like the ones I've read were super fast paced really easy to consume short chapters and also just like shorter books in general like for example my husband by Maud Ventura is maybe 230 pages so I definitely read a lot of shorter books this month as well but let me pull up my book stats for you guys. My story graph username is always down below for you guys, uh, along with like my other social media handles in case you guys want to follow me on there. I'm moving over so I can fit my little graphs on the screen, charts on the screen for you guys. So this month I read 14 books. I read 3,996 pages. 64% of the books I read were 300 to 499 pages. 29% of the books were under 300 pages. I read 100% fiction this month and my top genres this month were romance and contemporary literary fiction. And then out of the 14 books I read, I only reviewed 11 because I read a few short stories. And then my average rating for the month was a four star, 4.02. So that's my highest month yet. I know it's only been three months of wrap ups, but that's still my highest rating month yet. So uh, anyways, let's jump into it. I'm still not too sure if I'm going to do a reading wrap up or not a separate one. So my plan is I'm going to do a little brief synopsis of each book and then I'm going to give you a one sentence review. That way if I end up doing a separate reading wrap up, I'm not spoiling too much. And also if you're just here for the quick book reviews, I got you. And then if I don't end up doing a wrap up, at least I've reviewed the books in some capacity. So that's kind of my plan. First book I read was Guild by Raven Kennedy. I gave this a 3.5 stars just because it was the first book in a series. I didn't really know what to expect. And now reading, so I rated this a 3.75 originally, but now that I've read the second book, I went back and rated this a 3.5 because this just felt like one giant prequel, kind of unnecessary. I feel like the first and second book should have been combined, uh, but this is a King Midas retelling that follows King Midas and Orin, and Orin is his plated prisoner. This book is honestly full of a lot of drama, 
court intrigue, politics, and I feel like the best way to explain this book is Game of Thrones but with less characters, and less intense, more like spicy. You guys know Game of Thrones is my favorite TV show and book series of all time so I can't really like I don't want to compare the two because Game of Thrones is obviously better but it gives it gives me Game of Thrones vibes with all the political intrigue and drama and backstabbing that kind of happens so that was the first book I read this month. Next I finished off Redeemed by Lauren Asher which is the fourth book in the Dirty Air series which is an F1 romance series. I started the series back when it came out in like 2021 I want to say and I refuse to be finished with book series. I hate when things end so I put off finishing this for literally two years. So I decided this was finally the month and obviously this was a five star read. It is like a small town romance but set in the Italian countryside. Then I read Ready or Not by Cara Bastone which I was not expecting to like as much as I did. I'm pretty sure I gave this 4.25 stars. This follows Eve and Eve is just like really living her best life in New York City. She has a good job. She has a cute apartment. Like life is good until she has a one night stand and ends up pregnant accidentally and it's a little bit of a love triangle between her her one night stand and her best friend's brother so we got a few different tropes in there and this to me is just accidental pregnancy trope done well which I've never read a book that I liked that was done well until this so really really enjoyed this for the second book in the plate of prisoner series which is glint and like i mentioned earlier i feel like book one and two could have been combined honestly i give this one a 3.75 star i still really enjoyed it but knowing that each book gets better that's what everyone told me i just never know how to rate a series like that um this book definitely focuses a ton more on Oren's character development and then we also kind of figure out who her lover is going to be or her love interest in this book and it was a really really good time i haven't picked up the third book yet because it's like 700 pages and I'm a little intimidated. Overall, I'm having a really fun time with the series so far. Next, I read Bright Young Women by Jessica Noel. I think I ended up giving this a three star. This was good. I was waiting for it to be great. I feel like the author was trying to do a little bit too much. It felt a little long. I didn't really ever feel connected to the characters and also I felt like too much time was spent on the backstory. It was just overly complicated where it didn't really need to be. I don't think I liked the mix of it being a fictional thriller and a true crime story. I wish it would have been one or the other. Uh, it just wasn't my favorite. Was my Husband by Maud Ventura. I give this four stars. This was my first experience with like a lit fic book about just batshit crazy woman doing unhinged things and I loved it. This was translated from French apparently and this is about our female main character. We actually don't know her name and she is obsessed with her husband like in an unhealthy way to the point where she will literally like test him uh, just to see how he reacts and she just really needs to make sure that he loves her as much as he did the day that they met and every day of the week follows a different color and the twist at the end it's not necessarily a thriller but there's a big twist at the end that I did not see coming and I just thought this was phenomenally done so hats off to Maud Ventura I will happily read any of her works and I read Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malour and I ended up giving this a 3.75 star this is about Cleo who's in her mid-20s she's just left England for New York where she meets Frank who is I think he's in his 40s he's an older gentleman and basically they end up falling in love and having a spontaneous marriage so she could get her visa and it's all just about how spontaneous decisions and our relationships in our 20s can really impact us and how we're growing honestly I've just realized I really like well-written stories about relatable fucked up people in their 20s that are just like trying to get through life. I think that there's a lot of points in this book that are relatable to a lot of people. I think this could make such a good TV or like movie adaption so I really really hope it happens. This is one of those books you just have to be okay with unlikable characters and I'll leave it at that. Okay then I read For the Last Time by Heidi Perks. That was my first five star thriller of 2024. So well done. The main characters which are a couple um, who start seeing a therapist for couples therapy and the therapist lost her sister about 20 years ago when she was like in her teen years and and for years there's been this missing necklace that they've been looking for and somehow the couple that comes to couples therapy um, talk about said necklace that the missing girl had and so you're trying to figure out the connection between the couple in therapy and the therapist super just fast-paced great writing I was honestly blown away I haven't read a thriller that good 
in a really long time. And I read Lovers at the Museum by Isabel Alande, which was a really short story. Um, it was one of Amazon's first reads for March, which this was really, really fun. It was my first time reading this author's work and her writing was just very whimsical and magical. This is a, like I said, very short story. It's only about 30 pages about a cleaner at the Guggenheim Museum who finds these lovers intertwined when they come in for their shift in the morning and the police get involved and they're trying to just figure out how these people got into the museum without setting off any like traps alarms like booby traps kind of thing like that like none of the alarms went off in like this very high security museum at night and I think the best way to describe this book is whimsical with a touch of magic and you're just kind of trying to figure out how they got in there there's this element of magical realism that plays but the book's not long enough to really dive into it and it really just leaves your mind wandering at the end I didn't rate this book just because it was so short but it was a really great read then I read Big Swiss by Jen Began. I gave this 3.75 stars I believe <laughs> This was just a really funny weird as heck book. This is about Greta who is a transcriptionist for a sex therapist and while transcribing which you get to see this transcriptions which is really really cool she falls in love with uh, one of the patients who she's nicknamed Big Swiss and she has this run in with the patient who she knows it's the patient because she hears the voice when she's transcribing but the patient doesn't know that uh, Greta is the transcriptionist. It was just like wild and hilarious and a fun time. Then I read The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. This is the first book in a series and I ended up giving this 4.25 stars. This follows Gavin and Thea who Thea's just asked Gavin for a divorce. He's just moved out. He's a major league baseball player and basically they kind of had like a really whirlwind quick relationship and marriage they had an accidental pregnancy then they ended up getting married at city hall and they've been married for a few years basically all of his bros that play baseball as well invite him to their like super elite secret book club and they all read regency romance in order to be better partners to their spouses and it's all about gavin trying to win his wife back which i think is a really refreshing uh, contemporary romance to read about because you don't often see it from the guy's point of view so honestly this was just like a really fun time and a very unique contemporary romance last book I read which I just finished last night was Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman I ended up giving this a three star I just don't really have much to say like it wasn't bad but it wasn't good I kind of was reading for the vibes this follows her main character who is bisexual and she's in a relationship with a female and then she meets this girl named Olivia at a bar who Olivia is sleeping with a guy named Nathan and then our female main character gets involved into a threesome but it's not like a raunchy book like it's not very explicit it's more just diving into the relationships and the jealousy and all of the feelings that happen in your 20s as you're discovering yourself sexually and yeah it wasn't a bad book but it just didn't blow me away I don't know it was just like a mediocre read to me so those were all the books that I read in March but I figured we could go really quickly over the April new releases I'm not going to set a TBR for April just because like I said there's so many good releases coming out that I really want to focus on um, I feel like these are all really well known authors so I don't really think I need to do much explaining if anyone needs me on April 2nd next week don't being just for the summer by Abby Jimenez next is she's not sorry by Mary Kubica April 9th we have two we have wild love by El Silver which I'm so excited about it's a start of a new series and then we also have The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo and then on April 23rd we have Funny Story by Emily Henry yeah, I'm sure there's some other new releases coming out in April as well but those are some of the ones that I am really looking forward to and I will make sure to share all of my thoughts in the upcoming vlogs but uh sort through these and see what needs to go back to the library and what needs to go back on my shelf and then I'm going to dive into my current reads I don't know which one I want to get to next and yeah but those are kind of all the books I read in March uh all that stuff and then I'm thinking maybe tomorrow or tonight we could do my current favorites and then my goal setting and then my budget really quickly hey guys hello it's the next day I I am indeed hiding in the bathroom because it's just loud downstairs and you can probably tell from my demeanor that I I'm a cranky bitch today. I am cranky, but like it's just life. I just, I've said this before, but I just feel like I have not caught a break at all this year. I'm not cranky, you guys. Don't worry. Y'all didn't do anything wrong. I'm just like cranky at the world right now. And yeah, what was like a 24 hour flu turned into a mini cold. And then yesterday or like Thursday, whatever yesterday was, when I finally felt like I was getting over it, my seasonal allergy started and. I feel like just every year I'm humbled by my seasonal allergies like I just forget how awful they are and I don't know if anyone else can relate but I have really sensitive sinuses and so I just feel everything so deeply in my sinuses and I just uh 
I just, I just want to know when life's going to cut me a little bit of a break. Like, I feel like every time I get my head above water, there's, like, a hand that's, like, pushing me back under to drown. And I'm just, I'm just keeping it real with you guys. I don't want to reflect on March at all right now. I really don't. I really just want to set some goals for April and move forward. Anyways, we're going to do, like, a really rapid fire budget review and my April goals. I don't even think I'm going to reflect on March, if I'm being honest. And some months are just like that. Like, some months we just want to leave in the past. And I did this last month, too, but, like, you know... It is what it is until life catches us a break. So, okay, let's run through the budget super, super quick. So income was higher slash lower than I was expecting. I did have a pretty big mess up in my hours at work. Like they forgot to input some. So my second paycheck was a lot lower than I expected, which means my April one will be higher. And then April's budget will just be interesting as well too, because I got my big raise. And then also some of our expenses are hopefully going to be reduced a little bit. Anyways, I did end up paying myself a little bit more from the business this month too, just because we also like property taxes and stuff come out so that was my income for the month that's not very normal uh, the expected on the left is pretty much my normal like I I'd say around 4,500 is like my normal income for the month give or take my hours do fluctuate at work a lot so my paychecks can be anywhere from like 1,400 to like 1,900 so I always budget off the lowest possible income that way if I get paid more great but I'm never budgeting higher and getting paid less and being kind of screwed for like cash flow expenses were a little bit higher this month because we did our property taxes I put those in expenses and not bills because it only comes out twice a year and then we did have to take Delilah to the vet and since it was her first time at our vet we had to do like a full physical and everything and we do sinking funds for the animals and so last year obviously we only had the dog and the horse so I only saved up for that um we got Delilah January 1st like we adopted her so I didn't have any money left over in the sinking fund from 2023 for her vet appointment at the beginning of this year. So that just came out of our variable spending and I was just really careful. Once again, I feel like every month is just so different in terms of what we're spending on what. And so I, I just feel like budgeting in those categories anymore just doesn't work for me because I ended up having to be really, really careful of my spending this month because we did have to pay for that vet appointment. But now going forward, of course, our sinking funds will be adjusted to having the two dogs and the horse. Um, so uh, it was just kind of this time that we had to pay out of out of pocket, like in terms of like from our checkings account, like we had to allocate it in the budget because we didn't have anything left in the sinking fund. Like I said, I'm really curious to see how groceries end up this month coming up because we did decide to stop doing HelloFresh every week. So it'll be interesting to see what our average grocery bill is in a month now. And our eating out is probably a bit closer to 100, 125, but we use cash um like if we sell something on facebook marketplace we just like use that cash to for takeout and random bits here and there like the flea market and i don't really put that into the budget just because i don't know i feel like cash spending when i first started budgeting i definitely did put my cash in there and it's just like up to the person i feel like a lot of budgeting is personal and what you decide to put in there versus you don't i don't really put like our sinking funds like when i take money out of it i just kind of do that like offline like i don't really put in like my income sinking fund and then the expense because it all equals out but when you're first starting out more is definitely super important and i would highly recommend tracking everything i just feel like i'm at a point now where i feel comfortable with what i track versus what i don't definitely a bit of a higher spend month uh, but we just adjusted in other categories like I just didn't really buy myself much this month uh bills and subscriptions this was the first month with our higher mortgage so we increased our mortgage I think we could do a max of 20 percent and it's so crazy Matt told me yesterday that us increasing our mortgage by I don't know what it increased by $300 a month shaved off seven years of our mortgage and then we could still do a big lump sum once a year um, up to 20% of the cost of our mortgage. I definitely think because we have a lower mortgage, we have a, an interest rate from the pandemic. So our interest rate is like 1.7, 1.8%. We figured now was a good time to throw more money onto our mortgage before we're up for renewal in three years. So this was the first month with that in effect and really, really happy with that. And it's definitely a comfortable number for us. Some months I break down the smaller bills and this month I didn't. Our baby bills ended up being 271 a person. Uh, the gym, I pay for the gym, Matt pays for the internet, so yeah, we just kind of honestly, we just take turns. We, um, car payment, car insurance was us or was typical, so yeah, this will be kind of our new bills going forward, which isn't a big change for us, because if you guys have been here since we lived in the condo, about 1900 a month each was our bills for our home because we had condo fees as well so when we moved here we actually were saving money so upping our mortgage we knew that we were comfortable spending up to about $1,900 a person a month on our total uh, bills because that's what we were paying before in the city 
savings I was able to put some extra money into our sinking funds this month so I put 500 into the house that's just like if I were to go to the thrift store and get something get paint um, and that money is always changing so for example it was pretty depleted this month because we had the countertop payment but now I'm slowly adding to it again and then I put $500 into our travel sinking fund. If we're going on a trip that is not business related, that we're paying personal out of pocket, we just like to have a sinking fund for that. That way we go on the trip. When we come home, we don't have to worry about that credit card bill or anything. It's just like we've allocated that money for daily spending. So, you know, New York City, like a Metro card, food, whatever fun things we get up to, etc rental cars all that kind of day-to-day -day spending is what we use our travel sinking fund for and then I had my typical investments which was 500 into my RSP 500 into my TFSA and so that was the budget for the month I'll put like my overall cash flow up here and kind of what I have left over I don't think there's much left in my checkings account right now we did not have much carryover going into April but that's totally okay so like I mentioned when I was doing my brain dump I'm kind of taking it easy this month I don't have a ton of goals I'm quite content where I am in some categories in my life and so those categories I just kind of want to sit back and relax and then put the time I would take to work on goals in that category into the categories of my life that I really want to improve on. So for personal, the only goal I have, and it's a fun goal, is explore a new town on a solo date, which obviously just depends on when I get my car back. But because I haven't really been able to leave the house a ton in the last like five weeks, I'd love to take myself just like on a fun big solo date day and go explore a new small town. Uh, health and wellness, we're still just focusing on our challenge which now we're at like the 45 day mark. So I just changed it to focus on my 45 day challenge. Business, I think I wanna attempt to do daily short form posting. I think those challenges are so fun to do once in a while. And if I don't do daily, it might just be four to five times a week. I don't know, I haven't really decided yet, but I really need to, cause it's literally tomorrow. But some kind of fun short form challenge. I feel like the short form content really gets my creative juices flowing in a different way than YouTube. And I actually feel like I have a healthier balance with YouTube when I do short form as well, because there's just some content that is better suited for short form versus long form. And I just feel like I'm at a really fun place where I'm enjoying both and I have a good grasp on what's long form, what's short form. So yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to be daily or just four to five times a week, but we will see. Uh, finance I just put finished saving for our May trip we're going to Florida in May and once again we just like to have that sinking fund fully funded so that we're not worried about when we're on vacation like oh my gosh like can we afford this dinner can we afford this can we afford that the money's already saved because there's nothing worse than getting back from a trip and being like now I got to pay off this big credit card like we already have the money we'll be able to pay it off and so uh yeah when we do trips like this Matt and I split um so we put it all in one credit card usually one of mine because I'm like the one that's like really big into like credit card points and rewards so we put everything onto one credit card and then at the end of the trip we just split it and so I'm gonna put aside probably another couple hundred dollars um we'll see we also have a bunch of Disney gift cards too to use up so I'd rather have a bit more saved than not enough so I'm gonna kind of go through our plans for the trip uh, what we're eating reservations we have and stuff like that and kind of see how much money I need left to do like you know like we're gonna do like a target run for food we always do that so just kind of sit down and plan how much money I need left to put into that account um, I want to have one date night out of the house now that it's nice out and we can maybe go sit on a patio I thought that would be really fun and then for house and home, I do have a few goals, but this is one of those categories where like personal work, finance, I feel content with where I am. So I'd rather take that energy that I would put into those goals and put it into the house. So my three goals for the month are to finish the bathroom renovation, hang floating shelves in our dining room, and then um, I want to do a front porch refresh. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on that. I think that can be so fun, like a little front porch makeover. Um, but those are the goals for... April. I'm really, really excited about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the fun little like vlog style version of this. I do feel like it was a little bit more b-rolly than I normally do and that's just because I've obviously just been like under the weather the last week and I kind of just like made do with the energy levels that I had but I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!